Hey, here's something that there's no shortage of, 8-bit indie platformers. So why are we talking about one today? Watch this review to find out. I think a lot of the weariness around the 8-bit platformer format comes from the perception that it's an easy nostalgia bait aesthetic, often used to distract from otherwise unspectacular indie games, and whether that's true of other games or not, I can conclusively say that it is not the case with Shovel Knight. The debut title by Yacht Club Games, which is a team built from former WayForward employees, Shovel Knight places you in the role of Shovel Knight, a knight whose primary weapon is, you guessed it, a hammer. Just kidding, it's a shovel. As Shovel Knight, you'll fight your way through a handful of stages in whatever order you choose across a Super Mario Bros. 3 looking ass world map to rescue your companion, Shield Knight. The story is bare bones by design, and the game does a great job of getting the hell out of your way and letting you just play it. Every single cutscene is short and skippable, the bosses only monologue the first time you fight them, and what little dialogue the game does have is either useful or funny, frequently both. One thing that Shovel Knight nails is the feel of the action. It sounds obvious, but it's hands down the most important thing in a game like this, and to be honest, it's something that I felt wasn't always present in previous Way Forward titles. Luckily, Shovel Knight just completely kicks ass in that department. From the microscopic delay when swinging your weapon, to the pixel-perfect jumping and air control, to the fantastic Commander Keen-like Shovel Pogo mechanic, every moment of this game exudes care. Put another way, it feels thoughtful and it feels complete, and that goes a long way towards making this a super easy game to recommend. For me, the moment I knew I loved Shovel Knight was after the first boss encounter, the Black Knight. It's an intense, frantic, fucking hard fight that's almost as much fun to watch as it is to play, requiring you to dodge, bounce, reflect, counter, and, most importantly, learn how to do all these things right there in the moment. It's, for the lack of a better word, awesome. And the whole game is kind of like that. Shovel Knight is tough as hell and pulls very few punches and would rather have you figure out its secrets than just straight up tell you. And there are a ton of those secrets. Beyond the subterranean mechanical depth, the game also packs each level with totally missable hidden sections that reward you with money, new powers, or just good old fashioned collectibles. There are a ton of things that this game does right, but Shovel Knight's greatest revelation might be the way that it deals with death. Instead of burdening you with a finite number of lives like its old school predecessors, you're instead given infinite lives with a caveat. Every time you die, you drop a quarter of your current wealth in winged cash bags that wait for you to retrieve them on that exact part of the stage. If you die again before retrieving them, they vanish, and then you drop three more bags, further reducing your wealth. It is, in essence, a 2D take on the Souls system from Dark Souls, and it's one of the smartest things about this entire game. What makes this system so great is that it circumvents the frustration and repetition of running out of lives in throwback platformers, but keeps the important part, the sense of consequence to dying. Trust, when you screw up and drop three or four thousand gold over a chasm, you will go to some serious lengths to get it back, and it provides some of the most tense moments in the entire game. It's a brilliant system, one that lets poor players still enjoy the game and eventually cheese their way through the toughest sections, while also giving the best players a great incentive to stay cautious and try not to ever screw up. In a game made almost entirely out of excellent decisions, the loot system is absolutely one of the best. Another one of Shovel Knight's coolest achievements is how much it looks and feels like an 8-bit game, despite totally doing things that would not have been possible on the Nintendo Entertainment System. The graphics are presented in full 16x9 widescreen and make use of things like extra colors, large enemy sprites, parallax scrolling, and screen shake that you just couldn't have done on those older systems. Likewise, the phenomenal soundtrack cheats a bit by making use of a couple more sound channels than the NES programmers ever had access to. These are smart, frequently invisible changes that break the rules of the NES in a way that works to the game's benefit. Actually, these audiovisual tweaks are kind of the perfect metaphor for the entire game. Yacht Club has taken the most important and essential stuff from an era they clearly love, and made small, careful concessions to modern game design that actually go a long way toward making it work today. They extracted the important, meaningful parts of old-school 8-bit action platformers and used lessons from modern design to create something that I believe is the perfect difficulty for a game of its ilk. In short, they pretty much nailed it. While Shovel Knight would be an easy game to dismiss on its looks, you'd be missing a funny, authentic, deeply fair, and truly satisfying platformer, the kind that just doesn't come around that often anymore. So yeah, that's what I thought of Shovel Knight. Obviously, I loved it, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. The game is out now for $14.99 on PC, 3DS, and Wii U. I played through on PC, but I'm kind of tempted to do a 3DS playthrough just to mess with that weird Street Pass battle mode. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the comments. Bye.